So this week I'm in the stunning Snowdonia in full on winter conditions. I'm currently on the pig track heading up to the summit of Snowdon and as always, I'll be looking for somewhere to do a wild camp. And if you want to know how deep it is on the sides next to the path, look at this man, unreal. There's some geezer eating a disco in my tent. Yo! What do I do? Yo! He's on, he's on scarpers. Do not come this way, John. seconds in from car park and I'm already stopping to get my bag off because I need to put my micro spikes on straight away. So on the warden's report it says there's 10 degrees celsius difference in temperature between here and the summit and we're already in the minuses down here so that tells you it's going to be pretty damn cold up on top. So I'm currently on the pig track heading to the summit of Snowdon. I'm going to be scoping out potential camping areas whilst I'm on the way up. This is just absolutely perfect, honestly. I just can't stop smiling, I am buzzing. Proper buzzing. All those camps in the clag are worth it just for this. Even if I get the clag later, I'm not bothered. Because what I'm seeing now, I am very grateful for. So, so far so good, pretty straightforward. Certainly made a lot easier with the micro spikes though. But what I am finding is as we're getting higher, the snow seems to be sort of sticking together a lot more and it's sort of balling up under the micro spikes. So in last week's episode, I was parked up in Lanberis and this morning I drove over to the Penny Pass car park. Let me just say that was pretty eventful. It did snow last night and the early hours of this morning and it was like ice with snow on the top on the roads so quite slippy and I drove there in pitch black and you know what these Welsh roads are like some of them are pretty gnarly and then the parking prices were £10 which you'd think it's pretty reasonable but that's for 24 hours so I've had to buy two tickets 20 squid 20 squid but look where we are can't complain, can I? Let's be honest. So, I mean, you won't fancy standing on that in normal trainers. Look at this, man. Unreal. So I'm following the path that runs up the centre of the screen now. You can just see a person there, look.
So we've got less than a mile to go to get to the summit. This is where we start gaining some proper elevation now. It's getting a little bit more windy now as we get to the top. Got quite a chill on it as well, let me tell you. And we've just gone out at sun into the shade and the temperature difference is crazy. I'm starting to see quite a lot of crampon marks on the floor. So that could be a good indication that I should probably put mine on. Yeah, it's getting really deep now. So, next opportunity I'm gonna get these crampons on. Just could do with finding a rock to put my bag on so it's not in all this snow. All right, so I've now swapped the micro spikes out for the full-on crampon. Straight away, much more grip. And I've just been kindly informed that a guy just measured minus 15 up on summit. <sighs> Probably the coldest I'll have experienced so far, that. Well, definitely the coldest I'll have experienced. Oh. We just got into the sun again. Oh, it's beautiful. Buzzing. So that is essentially what you've got underneath quite a bit of this path. Just a load of ice covering the stone and then the snow on top. Last little push, just up to this ridge and then up to the summit. I couldn't film much at the summit because the batteries just keep dying. So I'm heading back down towards the miners path. Find somewhere good to pitch. So gone for ice axe as well. On descent. And I'm certainly glad I brought the crampons as well. My nose feels bloody numb. At least GoPro's staying alive for more than four seconds. Now we've come off at summit. I think anywhere we pitch tonight it's going to be epic. Just everywhere is covered in snow. This is just what I wanted. I feel like I've been waiting so long for a day like this. Forever seeing photos and videos of everyone else out camping in the epic snowy weather. No clag. No clag. Blessed. Blessed guys. Get outside. Whenever you can if you can like this bit here without the proper equipment you're knackered it's just ice all of it there's the summit up there and if you want to know how deep it is on the sides next to the path the ice axe just keeps it just disappear if i push down so i got to send a little snack for while i'm hiking just a bit of beef jerky. So this rock here is where the path sort of splits. So you've got the pig track on the left, which is the way I came up. And then you've got the miners track on the right. And that's the way I'm gonna head down. See if we can get a camp somewhere down here.
Not a bad little pitch, is it? Just next to Snowden, which is looking like the top is getting covered in clag. So we timed that pretty well. Epic view, so. I'm not even sure what surface I'm on with the tent. There's quite a bit of rock underneath it, but there's that much snow piled on. We'll be all right. Pegs are in good anyway. And I might borrow a couple of these stones and put them on guy lines just in case. I'm happy that the tent's nice and secure now. Put rocks on a few at guy lines. Should be all good. Not gonna lie, it's Baltic. Hands are freezing. Just getting all pegs in and that all fiddly little bits. But now we're all set up, we're all good. Now in an ideal world, there should be a pair of rab gloves in here because I couldn't find them anywhere. And there they are. My rab gloves and my liners. Whether they're dry or not, it's a different matter. But at least I've not lost them. talking much better now I'm in this down coat I can stay out here all day not literally so there's my pitch under the mighty Snowden which has cleared up and it looks like some nice colours popping So I think I'm going to have an adventure food chili con carne first. They don't call it the sword saw windmaster for nothing. I have never used a windshield. Look at that sky man. Some lovely colours. Windy. I've had to shut that fly sheet because I just can't take that wind chill on my face anymore. I've got the top of the tent door open a little bit so I can still see the nice view. Some nice colours, but yeah, just need to get away from that wind chill while I lay off my scran. So I've got my dehydrated meal boiling the bag. It's just been sat inside my sleeping bag, hopefully warming my sleeping bag up as well. In fact, oh, use it to warm my hands up. Blowing a gale out there. I thought I were in like a sheltered spot, but it feels like I'm in a bit of a ball. I've got big snow on just behind me. I think the wind's coming straight over that and down. Right where we are. So I hope them pegs are in proper, because I don't fancy ending up in that Lynn, Jeff Lynn. To be fair though, one of my pegs is pegged down with ice axe. That ain't going anywhere. It's about that far into the ground. Good luck getting that out tomorrow when it's frozen. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold that fort, where's my bag? I totally forgot I bought these. Just a little bit extra to go with it. Four soft nans by Warburton's. I'm not even gonna bother toasting them. 
Well, I ain't got a toaster, but I mean, I'm not going to bother heating them up on the stove or out. Just eat them as they are. Right, let's give this a try. Consistency looks good. I started pouring and then I couldn't see it lying. I didn't know where it was, so I just guessed. I'm not going to be able to see that, are you? Oh, dropping it on vestibule. Right, let's give it a try. A bit grainy. Not sure if that's done. Yeah, it's nice. It's got a little kick to it, you know, actually. A little bit of spice. Slap a little bit on corner. Just use it as a little... Mm. It's all right. I'll take that. I'll take all out here, mate. Can you even see me? It's pretty dark, isn't it? I didn't bring that big old light. I'm trying to cut back on weight a little bit for this trip because I knew I had crampons and all that crap to carry. My crampons weigh a ton, mate. Antique. Right, I'm going to strength rest of this and then I'll bring you back. Oh, there's so much chilli on vestibule, man. No one's going to ever buy this tent off me if I ever try to sell it. Not if they watch the channel anyway because I've f***ed in it. I've f***ed in it. Lovely night, it's just freezing out there. Snowden's clear. Little tip, if you're out in freezing cold temperatures like I am, when you're not using your gas, bang it in your sleeping bag. I've had this in my sleeping bag for about an hour and it's really nice and warm now. So I'm gonna make a brew, and there'll be no trouble with the gas. Because I refill this canister, the gas that I'm actually using isn't really good for cold conditions. The normal jet boil stuff is though. But as long as you keep your canister warm, it'll be all right. There's a bloody wizard's blizzard blowing out there. I don't know where this has come from, because it won't really forecast. I got a question about a hot water bottle on Q&A. So I brought mine with me this time. So what you're going for out of Disco's salt and vinegar or McCoy's Cheap Shop Curry Sauce. Let me know in comments. Here we go again. Yo, I swear down, there's summer in that Disco's packet. What are you doing, fella? There's some geezer eating a Disco in my tent. Yo! This geezer is just chowing down on a disco inside my vestibule. What a fella. I bet it's warm in there as well. But he can't stay here, man. He'll be chewing through bloody fabric and that. I was like, what's this rustling? Ooh. What do I do? My man likes discos though, so he made that decision. My fault for leaving food wrappers about, I guess. But I've never experienced that before. I'm glad I noticed it while I were awake. Oh, I'll cut tail on it as well. What do I do? Yo! He's on, he's on scarpers! Do not come this way, John. That's it, find your centre way out. Do not be chewing tent. Where's he gone? Oh, he's back. He's under Scarpa. He needs to Scarpa. Oh, he's there. Don't... Don't be coming in main body. 
No, 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 don't go behind there. Oh, I think he just wants to get out now, doesn't he? Is he gone? I think he has. Better not be in my boot. At one point, he was getting in gap between inner and outer. I don't want him running around back at 10, messing about. <sighs> Absolutely mental. See, someone asked on that Q&A, have I had any strange encounters while wild camping? Well, yeah, I have now. That bloody thing. Honestly, when I heard that rustling, it frightened death out of me. And I just seen him chowing down on disco. Man's in my vestibule. Better not be off to tell his mates. Get bloody raided. Guys, back for round two. Fella, there's nothing in here for you. Man's chewing on my boots. You're getting it main bit. Right then, the wind seems to have died off a little bit, so hopefully it stays like that throughout the night and I might get some decent kip. So I'm going to try and go to sleep now and hopefully that guy doesn't come back because I cannot be arsed dealing with that. Anyway, I'll bring you back in the morning. What a morning. Those colours, man. Unreal. The pinks and the blues. It's even shining on the water. On the lin. As always, the GoPro won't make it out. But those colours are popping. So everything's out of tent now, rucksack's all packed. I've got my crampons in a separate bag there, which I'm just gonna strap to the top. I'm not gonna need them this morning, I'll just use the micro spikes. Z light, I'll strap underneath once I put the tent in the bottom of the bag. And then the poles, I'm gonna put on the outside of the bag. So now it's just about digging this tent out. So these are gonna be pretty frozen in. I'll just check that. Oh no, that's not too bad. Look at that. Bendy Wendy. Bendy Wendy. There we are, leave no trace, as always. But that is picturesque, that right there. Big old body of water as well, that. So I think it's about three and a half mile from where I camped to get back to the car park. So I'm currently following the miners track on the way down and it is pretty busy. There's been a lot of people coming up this morning. I just hope they get the views because that way it's all opened up, blue skies. But behind me, you Clegg. So I got lucky yesterday actually. Wow, look at these old buildings. Anyone knows what this was? Let me know in comments. Well, what these are? Well, I'm guessing since we're on the miners path, something to do with a mine. That'd make a good pitch down there. You're very close to the path though. Doesn't seem to be quite as much snow down here once you get a lot lower. 
but everything is frozen. Look at that body of water, frozen solid. Wonder how far a bit of walk on that in my micro spikes. Subscribe to not find out because I won't be trying it because I've not got a death wish today. Well, I've got a newfound love for Snowden. I came last summer on a Saturday, might have even been a bank holiday, and it was rammed. I went up the tourist path from Lamberis with my sister and her fella Lewis. Don't get me wrong, cracking hike, beautiful day, and we were blessed with weather and the views. Actually getting sunburned with that hot. I've done a little video if you want to check it out on the channel. I'll put a link to it in the description. But to just do it from this other side, during winter, full winter conditions, crampons, ice axe, so much fun. Challenging at times, especially those last 100 meters or so. But so much fun nevertheless. And then this walk back along the miners track, really chilling. Glad I still got my micro spikes on though, because like I said, it's very icy. But the actual walk is just relaxing. A perfect morning stroll. A perfect winter's morning stroll. And it's got me thinking, I really am tempted to do crib gawk in summer. I've done striding edge, and that's sort of the only ridge that I've done, and I know crib gawk is a lot worse than that. If anyone knows, in fact, yeah. If anyone knows of any sort of ridges, sort of grade one scrambles that are harder or more exposed than striding edge, but not quite crib gawk, let me know in comments because I might try that out first. So I don't even know if I'm scared of heights. I think I am, but then when I get up there, I don't seem too bothered. I think it's just more the thought of it, isn't it? But technically, I'm not too bothered about it, the climbing aspect of it and the fitness aspect of it. But yeah, I'll probably leave it till summer though. I'm not gonna try crew gock in winter with all heavy gear on. I'll wait till I'm more lightweight. My man's on skis. Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> man's skiing. Up the miners path. Love that. Right guys, I'm about half a mile or so away from the car, so I'm probably gonna wrap this video up here. If you did enjoy it or liked it in any way, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up button. Just helps push that video a little bit further afield. Drop a comment as well, let me know what you think. Make sure you've subscribed if you're not done already. And as a little Brucey bonus, share it on your Instagram story, on your Facebook story and tag me in it and I'll repost it. I do weekly videos every Monday at 7 p.m. If you want to support the channel even further, you can buy me a coffee or how I like to call it, you're buying me a splash of diesel to get me to the stunning mountains. Because diesel ain't cheap, my friend. And my car is a guzzler. Anyway, it's all much appreciated. Even just watching it, whether you like, comment, or subscribe, donate any door. I'm easy, mate. I'm just out here loving it. Right, thank you very much. Peace out. In a bit.